Hi everyone. The fourth episode will be short because I don't want to annoy you and because I'm working on something very cool for the next episode which is going to be big and it's taking a lot of time. So I took the chance to make a shorter video. As you can see I stepped up a game a little bit so I'm using a better camera for the intro and outro of this video. Let me know what you think about in the comments and if you like the quality of it. Today we talk about how to tune uh, poor quality uh, tools to how to turn them into something well worth using and with results that had nothing to uh, that are nothing less compared to high quality and high price it and pricey tools. I was um, I was about to start my woodworking journey a few a few years ago and I knew nothing about tools so buying a miter saw for 50 euros sounded like nothing but a great deal to me but boy I was wrong um, so watching channels like Arduino vs Evil um, Matthias Vandel or Easy Swan I learned a lot and these people really tweak and fix uh, tools or take them apart and show you the weak, po the weak spots or the good things or even build their own so I learned a lot and today uh, I'm, I fixed my crappy saw uh, making it true with nothing less than a hammer I just fix it with a hammer that's it that, that, that's the classical case of fixing it with a hammer um, and it began to cut flawlessly actually so and much cleaner uh, check this out okay let's make a quick and short video I'm in the middle of the build of uh, this machine here, which is the finger joint machine, my take on a finger joint machine. This mother flower has this plane, which is warped. It's, it's, uh, it's not straight, it's like this. It has this thing on this side and this slope on this, this angle on this side. So whatever I measure, there will always be light passing in between the, the square and the blade. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm taking this off because it comes off as a unique place, as a unique piece. So what I what I'm gonna do is we we I will take it out and check how much light will pass between a a, a straight ruler and this one, and then hammer it and try to fix it. Let's hope for the best. Okay, my bench is pretty uh, leveled because I have adjustable feet and I I basically made sure that every inch of this in horizontal side and vertical side was flat putting this in here you can already see the amount of light that is passing under this thing is unbelievable this was sold to me like that i mean it's a crappy thing it costs 50 euros it's bad quality so you would expect some adjustments to do but this the manufacturing of this is terrible and it's supposed to be trued up because you can see the finish here, right? This is the kind of finish you get when they threw up stuff. And this is at least two degrees off. And this is probably one. So now I'm going to try and hammer it probably here with something and make it straight. Wow. So I tried with the vise, but the vise was slipping. So I'm just putting it on the batch and I'm just going to try to hammer the crap out of it and see see if I can solve this problem oh it actually works wow wow it actually works much better than I thought I was expecting this because this this can't be high grade high quality steel so I was expecting it to bend and just a couple of hits it seems like they have worked if I check it again now on the bench and I'm going to use a little help here this light I can't see I can't see any of it in this part and I can just see a tiny bit of it here 
but yeah I'm gonna live with it it's pretty straight now this this guy here was compromising the whole functioning of this miter saw. so now today we fix this and I think now he's gonna cut some pretty damn square um, some pretty damn square cuts okay another interesting story about this is I didn't trust this because I, I measured I, I checked it manually with the square after, after the cuts so this was off and then I lowered down the blade and checked the squareness between this and the blade and it was off so I marked these marks here and at 45 because it was off but now that I took this out I see that is adjustable so I can adjust this back in a way that I can trust these marks first thing I place this thing where it, where it clicks and leave it there then I lower down the blade and block it in place with the pin that is in the back and then we can check the squareness this square here and when we are satisfied so it should be fairly easy to align it let's check the other side this, this is square now this looks very good very good so guys if you cannot do differently go ahead and buy cheap tools they can still be good tools if you know how to tune them and tweak them it's not a big problem and also you have to start somewhere right go around in shops go online check them out it's better if you can put your hands on them so you can see how they are built and you will learn that especially at mid low level a lot of them will share a lot of components uh, even across brands and lineups and you will notice you will have a, cl a clear idea a much clearer idea and you will notice that a lot of times spending 50 euros or spending 150 doesn't make a difference at all or makes a very little difference so uh, you, you will learn stuff like that you will you will see how how it is after fixing my miter saw today and made some clean cuts I felt like the same feeling of when I buy a, a new one it was it was very nice and all the worries about using that tool that was a bit sketchy and crappy sometimes were gone I was having fun using it I was you know measuring stuff cutting it and, and it was cool everything was good that's it for today and um, I hope you liked this video please if you liked it like and subscribe and if you have any idea or suggest or suggestion you want you want to uh, let me know just or even requests about building stuff or or tools tuning or fixing something just let me know you know drop a comment below and I will try to do my best to uh, select the best ones and thank you and see you next time.